my partner Garrett and I have uh, 18 months old triplets. They are a real handful, but they also bring so much joy when you wake up in the morning and they're all three running on the bed and you have to go downstairs and prepare three bottles. Everything is times three. So yes, it's, uh, it's a busy life, but, uh, but a wonderful one as well. The first time I went for, for a scan was, uh, was a real shock to the system. I think I was shaking and you feel very scared, something's wrong, this can't possibly be, how am I going to cope? Not only did, was I expecting triplets, but also I had uh, two identical girls sharing a placenta. In week, I think, 12, I was told that Hazel wasn't growing, that she was suffering intrauterine growth restriction, which means that um, she didn't have enough share of the placenta and that this could have lifelong consequences. And quite a couple of months later, things looked even worse. It looked like Hazel wasn't going to manage and wasn't going to survive. I thought I was actually okay, I was at least going to go to seven months. And then just out of nowhere, um, my waters broke. Five hours later, they were born, naturally. <laughs> so it was quite, um, yeah, quite a shock, I think. It hadn't really dawned on me how early they were, how premature they were. Nicole um, was diagnosed two days after she was born with um, a hole in her heart. It's like a roller coaster. It can get very difficult at times because then the reality kicks in once the shock's worn off of the um, severity of what you're dealing with in terms of premature babies. I think that's the hardest thing for me, is not knowing what's coming. It just didn't cross our mind, did it? No. It didn't ever cross our mind that there would ever be anything wrong ever. When he was first born, he had wires coming out of him everywhere. It was beautiful to behold after waiting so long to see someone, but it was horrible as well because you wanted to see him under different circumstances. Every time we got to see him he, he was getting better and better. One night we went home and the next morning we received a phone call from one of the nurses. She said I don't want to panic you but Billy um, has been fairly poorly overnight. He was really really grey, really grey and um, I, I thought that was it. We could potentially lose our son here. We, this is like desperate times to try and save a life here. You, you knew straight away what they were doing. That was when probably the most marvellous man I've ever met in my life turned up. Wolf said the problem here is, is his heart. Billy had what we call a very dilated heart. It wasn't pumping very efficiently. So the blood supply to the kidneys, to the liver, to the brain is not great. And so we were very worried about Billy's brain. With time and patience and careful management of the amount of fluids we're giving him, his ventilation, all those sorts of things that we have to do meticulously as doctors and nurses. He turned the corner. He's proved himself to be a very tough little boy. His heart has recovered and is actually now pretty normal in the way it's working. For his mum and dad, it's really a great result. <laughs> The support that's there from family, friends, and obviously the staff here at NICU, Adam Brooks, is just amazing. They very much um, want to get you involved as a parent, you know, right from the get go. The incubator and the wires and everything like that can be a little bit intimidating, but when it comes down to it, it's still a little child, it needs to have his nappy changed and it needs feeding and, and all the rest of it, and the staff are very, very good at that and very helpful. The neonatal unit in Cambridge is designated as a level three unit, so that means it's one of the most specialist units in the country. And we now have approaching 35 to 40 cots. Most of those cots will be filled most of the time. It's very unusual for us not to be almost at our capacity. And between our, the three level three units, our target is to deliver intensive care to 95% of the babies who are born in the east of England that require intensive treatment. The staff at Haddenbrook are um, really exceptional. And I think here um, in the UK, um, babies that wouldn't normally, maybe not even in nature, have a chance to survive, can survive. And this is um, a miracle, a miracle of technology, really, and of human experience and knowledge. Hazel, she was born so small, she could never have survived without all that machinery. And when halfway through her journey, I was told that it was like she was going to die, and I had, you know, already lost her so many times in my thoughts. Um, I think, I think, um, I was really grateful that I had all that infrastructure around me. Um, the knowledge mixed with the machinery, the te technology, all of that put together to do a miracle, really, because that's what Hazel is.
are a miracle. I'm in a privileged position because I see children uh, as they grow up in my heart clinics and I see twins and triplets and you know it's amazing how well the children do, it's amazing how well the parents do. I think parents are remarkable really. Well I feel very blessed and very lucky that you know, we've got two healthy children that are just fighting their way <laughs> in, their, in their early days of their life because it's still, still a long road to go. We're looking to the light at the end of the tunnel and it's now not that far before they may potentially be coming home, you know. Just living life with two extra people in our lives now, that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. It, there was loads of pros and cons but there was no bigger pro than getting to, to put him in his car seat and take him out of the hospital to, and sort of walking through the door and saying this is going to be your house and, we've got, and you've got all the toys that people have bought him that he's yeah. never even been able to touch and you've got them out and he can't even move. Can yeah, you? Yeah. you can put him in the arm of the crease of the couch and he'll just be there for as long as you leave him. Whereas now he, he just drops down and he's running off and, and crawling around everywhere. And he's just so happy. He's really He's like a normal one year old. Yeah. Noisy. Yeah. <laughs> Noisy and messy. Yeah. He's just great. He is, he is. If I had thought, you know, in those first weeks when I knew that I was pregnant and I was having complications, if I had only imagined that I was actually going to have three healthy, happy babies, oh, you know, unbelievable. <laughs>